friends, this is the Mrs. Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead. Um, I know I've been making a lot of pies lately, but you know what? When winter comes and you have leftovers or you have a lot of canned meat that you've put up, pies are just something that just uh, are is wonderful. Now the thing with this pie is, is it's going to be kind of a combination of all the other supper pies you've seen me make. But uh, we're going to make chicken pie. And first off, this is, uh, I made roast chicken last night. So Howie got nice sandwiches in his lunch today. But here's our, our chicken. This is what you're going to need. You're going to need, I don't know, a pound of cold chicken. Um, three medium sized carrots, two good sized potatoes, an onion. And when I made supper last night, I did not make gravy because I made mashed sweet potatoes and stuff and I didn't use gravy. But what I did was I drained the broth off and this is no doubt a jelly. I'm sure that's a jelly. And this is chicken fat on top and I'm going to be using this to make the gravy. So uh, let's start off with getting our chicken cut up. Okay, we're just going to dice up our chicken and if you can, have a nice amount of Oh, and you're going to need hot water pastry, okay? Because we're going to do make these individual pies, just like our pork pies, only we're making chicken veggie pie. Someone was saying the, uh, asking the other day, do we eat chicken, or do I ever make chicken? Well, I make it so often that I don't even think to do a recipe for y'all because I just, you know, it's one of those things that we eat. I, you know, one of my home raised chickens will. Uh, do us two, three meals as you're going to see. Okay, now this my sister Judy gave me for Christmas last year. Well, she didn't give me this one. The one she gave me was an actual um, chop wizard. This is a star grit, but I was so excited to find it in Canadian Tire because the one my sister Judy gave me, I wrecked. Don't use them for turnips, okay, folks? But I just love this thing because it makes onion a dream. There we go. There's our onions. I love this thing. Now I'm going to take my carrots and I'm going to do them on this too because you don't want your carrot pieces too big because they've got to cook. And we're going to make our gravy pretty thick this time for one simple reason is these vegetables are fresh therefore they will give off a lot of juice all right here's our carrots and our onions all ready to go this is my last bag my last potatoes from my grow bags and i'm leaving the skins on because well my dirt was organic and there was no pesticides there besides fungicides, so I have no problem eating the skin off of these potatoes. But I'm going to dice them up to into about half inch cubes. Because you want everything to pretty much cook at the same temperature. Potatoes cook just a little bit faster than carrots. So we're making them just a little bit bigger than the carrots. That's why I made the carrots so fine. Alright, we'll be back when I have all this together. Alrighty, here we've got our chicken, our potatoes, our onions, and our carrot. We're going to add some pepper, as always. You'll find that my seasonings are pretty simple when it comes to simple food. I always add garlic. Always. I love garlic, and I like a lot of garlic. A little bit of salt, not too much. And of course, as my friend coined the phrase, a little bit of stealth health, just a little bit of dried chopped kale. All right, I will meet you at the stove and we're going to turn this into gravy. Okay, here we are. We've got our pot on and I've got my um, leftover broth that I drained off of the chicken last night. Boy, you can tell these birds eat well. And we're just going to melt the chicken fat. See, I'm just scooping it off with a spoon. 
and I was right. Look at the gel of that chicken broth. It's just wonderful. Never, even if you're not going to make gravy, folks, never ever throw away the drippings from the pan. Always save them. Okay, now that our chicken fat is melting, now normally I do this with butter, but why waste the chicken fat, right? We're going to add the flour in there. And let me just get a whisk. There we go. I should have uh, had that cool down a little bit, but I may even put just a little bit more flour in there. Yeah, I think I'm going to add a little bit more flour. So I'm going to say about four tablespoons or a quarter cup of flour. Um, now remember folks, the veggies are going to give off a lot of juice. So that's why we want to make this super thick. That's already thickening nicely. Now we're just going to take our jelly broth. And wow, is that ever wonderful broth. And all that was was just a roast chicken. There was no... With a little, it was frozen. I put it in the, the oven frozen. Now we're just going to mix this in and let that jelly broth melt. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Look at that. All right, let's get this over to the table, put it in our filling, and make our pies. All right, let's get our gravy in here. I think I'm going to need a spatula. Look at how wonderfully thick. And that is just chicken broth, chicken fat, and flour. Look at that. That is just wonderful. No cream this time, folks. So there are differences in the different pies that I've been making. Let's just get that all mixed in there. Now, it doesn't look like it's going to... It looks like it might, you know, be too thick. But trust me... These carrots and potatoes and onions are going to give off water. And so, we want it to, we want the gravy to be really thick because it's going to thin out with vegetable juice. Alright, let's get on to our pies. And there's one. Alright, we'll be back when I have these all put together. Alright folks, change of plans. For some reason, um, I had didn't have enough pastry, and I uh, didn't put enough liquid in it, and trying to put the liquid in after is too much. So what I've done here is I've got two and a half cups to three cups of flour, half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, third of a cup butter, and a third of a cup lard, and we're just going to... We're going to make a, a chicken pot pie with a biscuit top. How about that? Got to be versatile, folks. I'm just going to break all this fat up. We want it to be a nice... We want it to be a nice crumbly consistency. Honest. All right. There is our biscuit we hope it's our biscuit dough. I don't know the way the things are going. And I hear I've got about a cup of milk. I'm just going to pour it in there like that. But we're just going to fluff this together until we have a nice soft dough. All right, let's set that aside. Get out our handy dandy casserole dish and butter it. There we go. Now we're just going to turn our chicken pie filling into the casserole dish. Okay, let's get all that wonderful goodness in there. Doesn't that look pretty? I love the colors. Little flecks of green in there that look like parsley. All right, now we're just going to take our biscuit dough and we're going to kind of form a log just like that and we're just going to roll it on our floured board because we don't want them necessarily sticking together so we get it fairly even and then we're going to cut it into say six four 
5, and 6. Now we're just going to put the flowered side down and we're just going to start, well actually let's put him in the center and then we'll just work these ones around. Here's hoping. Oh my goodness. Look at that. You'd almost think I did it by design. Let's dish it up and have Papa have some dinner. All right. I had a mishap today with the pastry. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Um, the I did the pastry and then went out to pick up Briar. And uh, I didn't realize the pastry was dry. So, oh, sorry, dear. Here you go. Taste it before you salt and pepper it. How is it? This is the Mrs. Wolfie from her Half Acre Homestead saying, you know, it pays to be flexible and have a good imagination because when things go awry, you got to think on your feet.